So you have to request it. No, you have to uh, ten dilute it. Uh, oh, there. See? It's porn stuff. First page. Um, five seconds. Like her pussy is sticking out? Mm -hmm. And there's a dick in it? No. Then it's not porn stuff. This episode of Good Times with Mo the Podcast is brought to you by Globe. It's not bragging if you back it up, right? In that case, welcome to the baddest show in the land. You guys have so much sexual tension. Where every question is answered. Um, why is the moon following me? And every challenge is met. I will survive 40. Three seasons of Good Times with Mo, and it's going as strong as ever. Color of the Night is the girl that's banging her best friend's husband. This is the top downloaded podcast in Philippine history. And it's not even close. Other shows will copy its style, will mimic its setup, but no one brings it like this. What's your favorite sexual position? 88, I ate you, you ate me. <laughs> Join us as we launch another season, another year. We don't just invite the hard questions, we dare you to come up with one. Boy, this guy's really weird. From Los Angeles and Manila, two studios, guest co hosts, celebrity appearances, and just a whole lot of loving going on. It's the world famous Good Times with Mo, the podcast, season three. And your host, the Philippine genius, Mo Twister. Welcome to the podcast on this Wednesday night. Oh, it's uh, oh, the night before uh, Independence Day, so we don't have work tomorrow. Oh, I love it. June 11, 2014. Good times on the podcast, of course, brought to you by Globe. Call us, 880-9294. Skype. Good Times Podcast. You can text us as well, 0927-214-1981. Catch us on Viber. Don't forget, best call this week wins a pair of Nike LeBron 11 Elite Gold Edition. Your chance of winning an iPhone as well tonight happens. All of that good stuff, but nothing better than our guest. She's funny. She's super sharp. Crazy sexy. And she's on the cover of FHM for June, Erica Padilla. Welcome Hi. to the program. Hi, Erica. Hi, Thanks how are here. you? Good morning I'm over good. there, and good evening Good to evening everyone. to you. Yep. That's right. <laughs> How are Erica, you? Erica, we had you on our uh, radio show That's right. um, last, was that last week? Was last, last week, week right? last week. Thoroughly impressed by you. Wow, thank you, Mo. Yeah. Hey, Pico, can you turn off the, mo the mark monitor in the background, asshole? You've been doing this a couple days in a row now. <laughs> Pico. Yeah, hey, I'm here. Sorry. Yeah, I got it now. Yeah. Thank you. It's fixed now. Here. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. No, thank you. Thank you, Mo. All right. All right, all right, fair enough. Um, let's see here. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, love problems, life problems, sex questions, whatever you want to throw. How are you in advice, uh, Erica? Are you, are you the go-to so, uh, person? Are you the resource amongst your friends and all that shit? I would say so. But I was just saying earlier, you know, most of the people that come to me are girls. You know, so, but I'm fairly, I'm fairly objective when I give my advice. So... I'm game for whatever questions. For we whatever usually, we, we generally have more girls calling the show anyway okay. than guys. I don't know. I, th I think it is just that it's just the makeup of a female. They're more willing to share. And they're trying to seek your wisdom. Well, and, and, but see, you'd think that, okay, a lot, it's funny because a lot of the men who call, they call about life stuff, mm -hmm. their job, their this, their families, you know. Um, and then the females, they're the ones who call about their sex lives and all of that good stuff. Really? Kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But we get a lot of international calls as well. I mean, our first two calls here, Australia, Japan. So um, you'd, you'd think, I th what I think is like the females abroad, they're the ones that are a bit, a bit more gung-ho, except if you live in Cebu. The Cebuanos by far are the wildest people. They fucking call the show and they've got the craziest story. So you'll, <laughs> you'll see that a little bit later on the show as we, as we move on. Okay. But yes, you're on the cover of FHM. Uh, you look great. It's Thanks. it's it's aggressive. It's great, in a good way. It's aggressive because you really don't have any underpants. I mean, are you really nude there, or do they just kind of Photoshop the the the, the panty thing out? I mean, how does that work? <laughs> do I really have to answer that? Well, it yeah. was it was a um, it's a skimpy sando, yes. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, I was just wearing the sando. I was just wearing the tank top. You mean you? You just had a tank top, and there's just backpacks just hanging out. 
Oh, emo! <laughs> well, wh- what? A penis was hanging? I mean, it's just backpack hanging out. I mean, it's just fucking yeah. right there. I'd rather say the penis. That, well, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so the photographer has an outtake of your badge because it's not like you're, you can cover every angle of I, it at know, every given shot. That particular set was just really very sensitive, you know, that. So I made sure that there were the, the, the people, the, the, the team was actually there to protect me. I only had the stylist there and uh, the makeup artist and the hairstylist and the photographer. And except for the photographer, everybody else were gay. So... They made sure that I was protected because that's what I uh-huh. that's what I said. Before well, why the, not? Why not request for a female photographer? I, or you know, you're okay with the photographer because you know, I actually worked with him before, and ah, okay. and he's actually very decent. He would wait for me to What's finish. What's his name? Who is um, it? EJ Leong. EJ what Leong is the luck. name. EJ, you lucky asshole. <laughs> but but there must be a shot there where there's exposed vag, right? I mean, just ah. because you're fucking naked. <laughs> By the way, well, you, you can curse on the show. I saw <laughs> Please forgive me when I say fucking shit. No, no, you're fine. Me. Well, yeah, I don't know. I didn't check all the pictures, but I'm pretty sure that I have everything covered. It's not as... Sure. The, the, yes, I'm sure. The, mm. the sand is really long enough. It's actually long enough. And yeah, aside from the super low but neckline... But you're walking around like, I mean, let's just call let's just I, call what it is. You got a big ass, so you, big ass is just hanging out. The I was just, time. I was just at one spot. I was just, and I was just standing. Yeah, but you had to walk to that spot, expose the ass and badge. I removed my robe. I removed my robe, ah, and then after that, I was just at one spot all throughout that particular set. Awesome. So yeah, it was good. But I'm, there's. There's tit shots, like has to be, because like you're covering <laughs> nipple with just the just the skinny part of the sand. Maybe, part. I mean, maybe come on. that's why. Yeah. That's why after the shoot, e- I told EJ, "You are now officially my pseudo husband." That's right. You are now officially my pseudo husband, and thank you for protecting me. And for if if ever there are outtakes of whatever exposure, it's yeah. all yours, Tits and I trust you to keep them mm-hmm. safely. <laughs> all right. Boy, that's that's aggressive, Erica Padilla. I mean, that's pretty hardcore. But hey, good stuff. I enjoy it. It's beautiful. It look, it came out, it came out really well. It's just I got to think about the the logistics part. The, the actual when you're there. I mean, if you're not wearing any underwear, there must be a bad shot somewhere. But okay, you know what? I, I see where it could happen. If if the <laughs> if the sound is long enough with the robe and all of that controlled environment, yep. I can see that maybe there's not an accidental shot. That's right true. Right. Well, Are you well, ready well. to go? I'm ready to go. Let's do this. All right. Let's let's, let's, let's we'll, we'll get back to your 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 career and your little layout there in a little bit but let's get to the people first let's go to australia and talk to adrian who is 32 adrian you're in the beautiful city of sydney you ever been to sydney erica gorgeous i haven't been but i have a good i'm sorry but i have a good friend who's living in bondi right now and he says it's fantastic yeah yeah it is fucking beautiful uh adrian good times man uh thanks for being here buddy what do you got hey mo how are you I'm good. excellent. This is Erica Padilla. Hi, She's Adrian. Hi, man. Erica. Hi. How are you? I'm good. It's not very nice right now because it's winter, so it's quite cold. Hi. <laughs> oh, I love it there, though, in winter. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it, I, I'd amazing, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, anyway, so what's good... up? Yeah. Um, well, how do I begin? So um, I have a problem, Kase. Okay. Um, there was some at one, one point in my life where I was, you know, you can say probably naughty, where... Yeah. You know, playing around, sleeping around, and sure. You know, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and there was even one point, like three years ago, where I had a live-in partner for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're 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 okay. Um, the problem and right now. You're is, you're gay, right, Adrian? I, I can yeah, hear your voice. Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. I right, am. Just, just I want am. to confirm. Yeah. Cool. So we were living in together for a year. Uh, Aside from the people that, you know, in some some hookups that that I've been doing around, uh, uh-huh. the problem is, um, six months ago last six months ago, I found out that I have an issue with health. Okay, you know and what what's I mean? that? What's that issue? And it's I turned out to be HIV positive. Oh, oh. excellent. All right. Now, so I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you got the, HIV, here, huh? the health the healthcare here is good, so. I mean, it's just a, just a 
it's just that you know, it's I'm not, I'm not putting it down, but it's not no big deal. I'm, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's a big deal, but you know, I mean, it's a big deal. It's not an immediate death <laughs> no, sentence I mean, I mean, I, as I, I, it I mean, used I, to I mean, be. I mean, it's it's manageable right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. my problem. Yeah. No, is, I agree. Um, my problem is, like in my case, it's very manageable. It's just like you have to take this thing. The problem is those that I've done had passed with. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to, how what to do because you know you, I'm not you, you do... probably got the hiv from one of them and you gave the hiv to a couple. Is, yeah. is... So you feel guilty? You know what? What they say is that it's at this stage. It's no longer important where you got it from. It's the point is yeah. that you just have you it. just have to you know you Tell just people. have to move yeah. on and manage it. My problem is, how how about those people that, you know, that's that's possible that you know that they have it. If, if, if that's what you say. Yeah, I call it. Um, uh-huh. And I'm not I'm not I'm not ready to expose myself. So how do I inform them or how do uh, you know? Well, you're gonna have to, buddy. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're ready or not. You just have to. It's the right thing to do. You got to call up every dude you. Slept, you slept with. with, and you just have to say, "Hey, uh, this is <clears throat> this is what's going on with me." Mm-hmm. And uh, I can I I suggest you get checked. I don't know if I got it from you, or I don't know if I gave it to you. It at this point doesn't matter. I just need to do the right thing, which is you guys got to go get checked. Yeah. Now, I, yeah. Sorry, go go, Erica. Adrian, how old are you? Thirty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Thirty-two. 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 I think. Yep. I mean, how how many people know of your situation right now? Just my best friend. Just your best friend. Even my family oh, doesn't us? know about it. And well, Aww. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aww, Adrian. I'm going to come here. No, but they, what, they say, what, what, what they say is because there's really um, no need for you to disclose your, your situation. Uh, uh, situation. Yeah. It's just that. Yeah, there is. To... I mean, you, you should. You got to disclose it to these guys that you slept with. I mean, it, it's the right thing to do. Do most people do it? Absolutely not. Of course, because why would you want to? Um, expose, expose yourself. yourself. But, but, but at the same time, listen, if it is as manageable as... You as say it is. You say it is, and as, as we know it is, and the healthcare system there is solid, which I know for the fact as well, and the doctors are confident that they can keep, excuse me, they can keep you healthy and, and you got a good lifespan ahead of you as Magic Johnson does, um, then, then, you know, you shouldn't feel so bad about ex- quote-unquote exposing yourself yeah. to the people that you've been with. Yeah, you don't. Now you can ask but, for their. I don't know if you think the word sympathy or is the correct. But you can ask for their silence and say, "Hey, listen, it. I'd prefer you keep it between us, but I would like you to get back to me on whether you're positive or not, because I want to know. And maybe we can form some sort of support group, or maybe we can just know. You have to find out. That's true. And I mean, I don't know. I'm. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing this situation uh, from you know from a caller or whatever. I think it's just really important that you also inform family, for me, just so you can get the right support because whatever happens, your family will be there. Well, so, do you need the support, Adrian? Because yeah. you see, you sound like you're good with it. The, the only reason I'm, I'm saying that, um, Erica, is this. What if his family lives in the Philippines, which is highly likely that they live in the Philippines? He's going to tell w- – wait, uh, Adrian, where's, where's your family? family? Philipp- Philippines, Australia. Philippines. Yeah, Philippines. Okay, yeah. You tell your Filipino family that you have HIV and they're going to panic because... I know. Because you... I mean, come on, let's just face it. They're likely not as knowledgeable about it as you are. Yep, yep. So they're going to hit the panic button. They're going to think you're dying. They're yep. going to... I mean, we're all dying at one point anyway. Yep. But they're yep. going to think you're near death, you know. So uh, I I don't know. I mean, Erica, I see what Erica's I, point well, is. I, think- I see the spirit of her... Her advice. I think you just have to get more people. I mean, one person knowing about this might not be enough of a support. Um, I Does think, he need it though, Erica? Like, you understand? Like, we I, we might think immediately he needs support because it's HIV. Mm-hmm. But what if he's so knowledgeable about the virus and he has the full confidence of his medical staff that he actually doesn't need it? But the thing is, maybe I'm not saying to I'm not saying that he tells it to a lot of people. At least maybe this person, this maybe your best friend, doesn't know a lot about HIV too. And he may be just, he's probably just supporting what you are saying just so you feel good about it. So what I'm no, trying to say is get a better support group, like a solid, solid group of people that actually know of this more than your best friend. So you can be more decisive of your decisions, especially that you need and it's just prop, it's just but proper for you to inform the people you know, that you might have contaminated the deceased, the deceased to. So, what I'm trying to say is, um, 
it's a difficult time for you and one person who is not contaminated with the disease might not be enough of a support or a source of advice for you to deal with other consequences of your situation. Well, I, just, I, was, see, I, I completely agree with you, Erica, 100%. If he says he's terrified, like, I, I just want, like, if you know a lot about the disease or the virus or whatever, and I, I don't know as much as you do, Adrian, because I'm sure you're fucking, you're fucking reading up on it like crazy these yep. days. But yep. is, it, is it any worse to have, say, a serious case of diabetes? I believe like that exactly. would be even worse. Um, it's no, worse because you have been, so much that, more maintenance. There's so much more scary. Saying, that's what they've been saying here. The doctor's been saying here. It's, again, I'm not like, put it, like making it value. Voila, pero it's, you know, having a cancer is actually worse. The only problem is the yeah. social having stigma. Having diabetes is it. worse. Yep, it's 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 just like taking you know a pill, a maintenance pill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I'm not I'm not making value. Well, uh, don't get me wrong. No, no, but... Adrian. No, but but I I get I I absolutely understand. And yes, I mean like, think about all of your friends right now who have diabetes, like the hardcore yep. diabetes, where they're mm -hmm. checking themselves yep. every day for the sugar. They got to make sure this. They're going to yep. go into diabetic seizure if they don't have yep. enough this or they don't have enough that. Man, yep. that's way more maintenance, and that will kill you. And that's forever, yep. just like your HIV. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So, do you need the support group, or are you okay. strong enough? You think you're okay? That's... I mean, yes, it's bad news. Yes, it's awful. But fuck, man. You know what? Your number one priority is telling the people you've slept with. Exactly. After that, it's really yep. else how about how you how you feel about whether you need more help, more friends, more support group. And if you feel like you don't want to share it with anybody, then find yourself a support group of strangers, like the alcoholics do, like the drug users yeah. do, like the gamblers do, and all of the sex addicts, whatever. Find a support group based, you know, made up of strangers, Actually, where you don't have to feel. I have so a weird question about though. Like, what yep. is it about telling the people you slept with that scares you? It's actually the social good stigma question. attached with it. Huh? It's yeah, just that's a, a good question. It's the social stigma attached to it, uh... you know, like... Otherwise, but I'm pretty me, sure, you know, I have much respect to the LGBT community. I'm pretty sure they are already open to that kind of... Disc I mean, they have, they have it in their minds already to accommodate that possibility. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's, it's yep. part of the issues that they are dealing with. Because they are under that category, so th that's also the risk that they are putting it, themselves into. Exactly. So yeah, no, Erica. Yeah, exactly. They they understand the risk when they go involved when they get involved. Oh, shit, uh, heterosexual or homosexual, you would, you yeah. understand the risk uh -oh. when you're gonna have unprotected sex with somebody, and sometimes the cards fall for you, and sometimes they don't. And in this case for you, Adrian, they didn't fall for you. You have HIV. Yeah. You slept with a couple of guys. You might have gotten it for. I mean, obviously you got it from one of them, and you probably yeah. gave it to a couple other dudes. In this point, you just have to just tell them. Like it. we can we can debate it for the rest of the evening whether <laughs> it's a good idea or not. Ultimately, it's something you almost have to just do. Yep. It's mandatory. So, so we can, again, sit here and talk about it. And yes, it's dangerous and this and family and support. But guess what? Ultimately, non-negotiable. And at the end of the day, the story, you having your HIV, you having your disease, doesn't end with just your story. There are other people involved. So you, don't, you just have to be selfless. You can't be can he do about this, it. Erica? Can he lie to them and go, hey, listen, I had an HIV scare where a guy that I slept with called me and said uh, he had HIV. So I had myself checked, and I haven't gotten the results yet, but I feel like I need to tell everybody that I've slept with to do the same. I mean, I mean if there you go. It's not confirming it, uh -uh. but... It's say it's just leaving it up in the air out there, and trust me, that kind of information I'm already running to the doctor. Yep, I mean if, if I that hear, would make it that. more comfortable for you, if it will ease up the process for you to at least inform them. Well, yep. yeah, that should that should be a that should be a good step. I, I it, it's it's a it's a slight lie that will get the ball moving at least for yeah. them because you can just say I just got a phone call, I'm panicking. Some guy told me he had HIV. I slept with him. I went to the doctor. I haven't gotten my results. I'm gonna get it soon. I need. Might as well I just get yours call, too. Uh, yeah, I want to call everybody yeah. and tell them about yeah. it. And yeah, then, you can do that. So that's an option. It kind of leaves it up in the air. But you know what? Actually, that, that's much. how I found out that this guy I slept with told me that someone called him. So he, we both took the test, and <laughs> surprise, surprise, he turned out to be negative, and I'm the one who turned out positive. He was so worried well, that, that he passed this yeah. to me. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean maybe you got it from somewhere else then. 
uh, Adrian. Either way, yeah. again, let's get back to it. It's serious, serious yep. sickness. I mean, yep, you're gonna have to. It's gonna be maintenance forever. You might yep. die from it. You might not. You might die from something else. Who knows? Yep. But at the same time, you just. It's your yeah, I, I love your at, yeah. I love your attitude about it. I love your knowledge about it, and it would be great if you can just kind of tie that all together by doing the right thing, which is calling all the dudes that you uh, fucked in the ass. Here, here. But, yep. not, all right. but not, 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 not tell them direct, right? Just make up some. No, excuse no. Or... Well, no, that's a I suggestion. Would, that's a suggestion. I would tell them. I would tell them directly, but because you have a reservation about that and you're not feeling strongly about it, shit. At least is what I'm saying. At least do that. Lightly yeah. lie about it. <laughs> lightly lie about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. All right, buddy. All right. Thanks, Take buddy. care. God bless you. You too. Thanks. Big Thanks, hug. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, AJ. Woo, enjoy that winter. All right, and the beach. <laughs> yeah, and the maintenance. <laughs> And the maintenance and all the pills that you have to take. <laughs> it's going to be a pain in the ass. What? No, but I'll tell you. I'll tell yeah. you this, though, Erica. Yes. Mm. Terminal, right? Mm -mm. But would it... I mean, it, isn't it a weird debate to have? I should, I'm sure people have had it, this conversation. Would you take HIV over diabetes? Would you take HIV over cancer? I would, I think. Well, at I this point, HIV is I have little knowledge about how manageable HIV right now is. All I know are... You know, the basic stuff na okay lang, everything can be managed already. Actually, people who have HIV can live up to whatever. I really don't know because at the end of the day, whatever disease you may have, as long as they're terminal, that will scare the shit out of me. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I, mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm mean, i not, even if I get to know that I have cancer or diabetes or what have you, the thing is, it kind of gives you that, you know, that feeling of insecurity already, whether you're going to live a long life or not, as long as you got to know about something that will, that can possibly shorten your life. And it, it, something is something. Yeah, no, listen, I'm, I'm terrified of dying. Man, I, I'm terrified. Oh, do I, I'm, I might even think about it daily because I have a family and mm -hmm. I care about my family immensely. So I think about it daily. I make sure, oh man, I better be healthy. I better, because I don't want to die on my family. Mm -hmm. But we are all terminally ill. Yeah, in the great yes. big you know scope of everything we're all one day closer to dying I think every the, day we wake up so i think also you know. knowing that you're terminally ill is not just about taking care of yourself but also thinking about the people around you eh? it's also about the the concern that your family that they will have for you because of the condition and all that it's not just simply about okay i'll get i'll be able to manage it because the doctors say the development in health says it's already manageable and whatever but the thing is it's the emotional and psychological effects also of being stricken by yeah 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 so. and then taking them obviously and then there's always there's always side effects to medication mm -hmm. and so it, it does your quality of life is going to is going to definitely take a hit adrian it's just, you know, in what capacity? In, in mentally, physically, emotionally, with your family. You know, you, you, if you're a strong person, you can, like, again, a Magic Johnson, for example, who many idolize for his ability to just stay so positive and, and do so much and still succeed in life in every aspect. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors, mm -hmm. whether he's feeling sick or this or that, but he looks great. And, uh, you know, if, if you're going to use him as some sort of inspiration, idol, inspiration, of sort, then, then so be it. I mean, I would feel a lot more comfortable, again, having HIV than, say, a really big time diabetes. Because we're the daily pricking and the checking and the fucking can't eat this, can't eat that. And I'm going to have a seizure. I'm feeling sick. Need some sugar. Emergency. You know, middle of the night convulsions. That's fucking well, you put that's it, a fucking if you put horrible it that way, thing to go yeah, through. If you put also. it that way, if it, will, if it will boil down to choosing, then I guess I would choose having HIV because again the maintenance is better um, right and, 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 and better. My, my point of choosing because obviously that's not realistic you don't choose your disease, diseases is when if I told you today Erica hey Erica guess what I have diabetes you'd be like oh that sucks and if I told you hey Erica I have HIV you'd be like oh my god mo, ano nangyari? you know the response <laughs> is different. so much more dramatic for HIV but if you put them side by side shit I think the diabetes is a more difficult thing to go through on a daily basis till so the I day guess the day. learning here is for you to also make yourself knowledgeable about right. about the disease that you have acquired so you'll to be help, more realistic in the approach right and to help you deal with it yeah to help you and deal to help with others it. to deal with it correct like the moment I saw here on the HIV positive guy I'm like eh kaya yan okay lang eh whatever we'll take yeah. the next one yeah no worries 
Yeah. I didn't even know we were going to dedicate this amount of time to this one color. <laughs> It's been like 15, 20 fucking minutes. All right, uh, let's go to let's go to Manila first before we go to Japan okay. and talk to Jiao, who is thirty in Jiao. Manila. Hi, Jiao, you're on line six. What's up? Uh, Jiao, your phone is shit. It, it's just that um, you know I, I look at the, I look at this show very highly, you know, like Thank you. Big fan. But still, your uh, phone is shit. Yeah, but still, your phone's shit. I can't hear you. Oh, really? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. Better, 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 better. Okay, it's better now. Quickly. Oh, fuck. It's fucked up again. T tell, us your, uh, tell us your story again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let okay, me go, go to the story. So, uh, Mo, um, I got this question. and Not really yeah. story. Like, this really quick question. So, sure. uh, I got Tinder, right? Uh, you know, yeah. you wrote that Good man. a lot. Yeah, yep. swipe right, baby. So um, I, I totally know how to use Tinder. Like I know who to swipe right, because I know that if they saw me, they will swap right too. Okay. I, All right. So you're I good got looking. No problem with that. Gotcha. But, like so, when they, okay. so, you can you know get in touch with Hold each other. Hold on one second. Talk, right? Jiao, Jiao, are you using sure. a headset? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Can you? Take Not. the fucking headset off, please, because your wire is fucked already. You need to buy a new one. Yeah, thanks, thanks. I will. Yeah, yeah. Take, no, no. Take the no, phone. Remove okay. it. Phone. Remove the headset and talk to us on the phone. All right, I just did. Is this hey, better? Oh, okay, better. God damn it, better. Like a million <laughs> times. Uh, and by the way, you need oh, a new sorry. headset, bud. It, the wiring inside is corroded and needs to be replaced. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got just sorry. Just Maybe it, yeah, no it got corroded because I listen to the show so much, like wow. well, fucking yeah. every day, man. Man, I appreciate that. And if I had a set of headphones, I'd fucking give it to you, but I don't. But anyway, back to your thing. So you, <laughs> so you're sure. a good looking guy. So yeah, there you, you go. You're confident. You're a good looking guy because you know that when chicks see you on Twitter, on Tinder, they swipe right. All right. So what's up? No, 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 no. I'm not that good looking. Like you know, I can be a six. I can be a seven. I swipe to the girls that are six and seven too. I just ah, know who will smart man. Like me back. I don't have smart problems. man. No, I like that. I, I like um, a confident guy who knows he's not handsome and goes after ugly chicks. Yes, go. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean not ugly. It's, like yeah. just a six just or seven, not but not ugly. ugly. Nine, nine. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Going back. All right, continue. Um, so, okay. Uh, so, uh, we, we, they swipe me, right? We, we get to converse. We, we get to talk. I think I'm doing good at that part, too, because uh, they, they talk back. Like, there are times that I, I don't chat with them, and they're just asking, hey, how are you doing? What are you doing today? Sure. Things like that. It's cool. And my only problem is, it's just that, you know, Tinder is basically a, a hookup app, right? Um, sure. I don't know how to convert the conversation of us fucking... having sex it's gotcha. like you know like I'm, I'm the greatest guy like the nicest guy of all but i don't know how to convert the conversation of us hooking up I, I, I you know, know i know think the burden you see the burden is not just yours though jow it is everybody's now because tinder you're right tinder is meant for fucking like that's what it's for it's for fucking the problem is mm -hmm. Us Filipinos, we take every social media thing and we make it the next Facebook and the next thing. We're now all of a sudden we're using it to socialize and to because we're so built that way. We're built to be social. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we're, we're built to be like online so socialization and stuff like that. So now all of a sudden people hear about Tinder. And they're like, oh, I'm going to get it just so I can have a new text mate. Well, that's not what it's oh, for. No. It's for fucking. It's for sucking <laughs> yeah. my dick. All right. You get Tinder, totally. so yeah. you get a dick in your mouth. All right. That's the point. But totally. Okay, you go. You, you swipe right in Amsterdam, or you swipe right in Australia, or you swipe right in fucking London, and you're gonna get ass. You swipe right in Manila, right. and you're gonna get a biblical verse <laughs> or a fucking yeah, uh, Paulo Coelho coat. From from the person that yeah, you get, swipe. that that's how we use it though. See, that's the problem. We fucked up the system. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, I mean, I swipe right in Singapore two uh, two after two hours. Uh, I got a mouth on my dick. Yeah, totally. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. So it's not you. It's not the burden for you to make the conversation towards sex. It's mm -hmm. the realization that as us as a people, we take mm -hmm. every 
app that we can find, every website, every social media platform, and we make it about conversation mm -hmm. and getting to know people <laughs> okay. and having as many friends as possible and how many followers. And then ultimately, we're going to use it for sponsors and corporate reasons. <laughs> and all of a sudden, oh, we no. fuck the entire system. Oh, no. Don't, please don't. don't. Don't do that. Do something more. Don't yeah, let no. I, I, do that I, was, on, on I, it, I don't I mean, have Tinder that control. Is, is perfect. I listen. I brought Tinder <laughs> to you, pieces of shit. I, I as a venue <laughs> for you to get your dick sucked. Okay. Now, yeah, Just like you, you complaining, Zhao. I hear about people using it for reasons like, like fucking telling me about your life and all of that. No. Oh shit. No. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Um, no. I appreciate Go back to this Facebook. advice. I mean. You have a very good point there, but if you don't mind, you see, Pico, your your yeah. tech guy right there. Yeah. I've heard yeah, that I was you know, call him he's in, banging mm -hmm. chicks left and right with Tinder. Mm -hmm. I wonder how he does that. I, mean, <laughs> wow. I think what he does is <laughs> yeah, I think I, what he I Pico think the key here, yeah, Pico, and you tell me if this is the way to go. Uh -huh. You have from the beginning, from the initial swipe mm -hmm. right, none of this emotional conversations. No, not actually. It's the other way around. Like I get to know them. You know, we we go out, etc. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, that's because oh, so that's out, how. So yeah, because so that's how you approach it. Because that's but how do you get, way okay. of getting into another person. Right. No, no, how, I mean, yeah. how do you get a dick? And how do you get a mouth on your dick? Like no, eventually after a few dates, and then yeah, there it doesn't hurt to get to know them. You know. Uh, okay, gotcha. And and that's that's, that's I, just how. I think the important thing here is the goal, getting the goal, whatever way you get it. Just don't get. Yeah, but but Pico swiping right on threes and fours. Oh no, I didn't know. So that's why you know there's a quick No, that to... was before. That was before <laughs> my commercial. Now I Okay, so since your Jollibee commercial, yeah, you're yeah. swiping yeah, right seven, to the sixes yeah, and sevens. Seven. Oh yeah, I saw that on YouTube. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, he's got a commercial. Nice up, <laughs> that's right. Okay, all right. Let's get back to it here. How do you how do you stir the conversation towards sex? Because if you listen to the show regularly, as you do, Jiao, you know that I have said the moment you start having a sexual conversation with a female, you're in good shape. Like you're in real. Yeah. I mean, Erica, right? Like, yeah. say you and I are friends, right? Okay. And I just met you, and mm -hmm. I think you're hot, and whatever. You think I'm interesting. The moment we start talking about sex, like your sex life, my sex life, and what we like, we're gonna be fucking in the next three days. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, but at least I'm in. A, I, I'm a. I'm in good shape. Yeah. Okay. At this point, <laughs> right? Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a hard part. Like, how yeah, do you to... switch that conversation? To I, th I mean, well, if if the ma the main intention is just for you to have sex, we'll just go straight. Tinder, yeah, yeah. If that's if that's the main point, the reason why you actually have the app is for that, right? So you don't have. I mean, just go, just say it straight, anyways. People are expecting that in the first place. I don't place. think you're gonna get that though. You're not gonna get it culturally. We're not yeah, built that way. Here. Where you, if you, if you mm, tell yes. me. Hi, I just uh -huh. swipe right. I want you to suck my dick. It's like fuck off, you yeah, that's pervert, true. maniac. You know, that's what it's gonna first be. Of, well, the thing is, first of all, I don't have Tinder. I'm just assuming that if you oh, you if, should try it. No. <laughs> no, no, your 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 phone will not. Yeah, your phone's gonna go crazy. To, I'm just saying that if you Tinder. actually downloaded that app, and you know, in the first place, that the app is for that purpose. I, ako kasi I'm a very straightforward person, so I do not understand why you're expecting something else. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, that's you though. I'm saying generally okay, what happens with you know, yeah, because what happens with Filipinos is they take a social app yeah. and they make it about socialization, which is what it is. Tinder, I mean Tinder is not a fucking app, but it's what most people use it for everywhere else except us. Now, I think it also depends where you're turning your Tinder on. Mm -hmm. Like if you turn it on in the places maybe Pico turns it on, then maybe you're gonna get quick to sex. If you turn it on in, oh, say, oh, like Ange for example, our producer Ange, she is in. Ange, where are you? You're in Antipolo She's or Marikina, Marikina or something Marikina, like that. Yeah. So when you swipe right in Marikina, maybe your people around there only want conversation. But when you swipe right in Makati, they understand mm -hmm. Tinder and Makati means sex. math on your dick. Yeah. So right. be careful where you're swiping right so you know. And then initially when you're talking to them, like don't don't talk about sex right away, but already start flirting. 
like from the moment you swipe right, at least start flirting already. Wow, mm-hmm. ganda mo naman. Yeah, wow, true. you know, I swipe right because, you know, I love mm-hmm. your picture. If she's got a bikini shot on the fucking uh, thing, wow, you know, you look hot in your bikini, man. What beach is that? You know, you start with that flirtatious background already. So there's uh-huh. no fucking... Build you know, up what, the what goal. You, yeah, what do you start judge him once call it? <laughs> friend zone. You know, none of that friend zone nonsense. Ew, the term. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Flirt right I away. Gotcha. And then hopefully Flirt we'll right. get the message across that Tinder is for ass. Everybody. Because like you said, yes. Thank you. you go to Singapore, you swipe right, two hours later, there's a mouth on your dick. That's what it's for. Oh, yeah. It's, not, it's let's just not so straightforward. Like, where are you? Yeah, two stations away? Oh, yeah. Sure, let's meet yeah. up. Yeah. Suck, suck in your dick go right to now. Her place. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no. Like I told you about the and celebrity who was on the show. This was done off air, but the celebrity that was here some months back, the guy, he said... He turned on his Tinder. He just found out about Tinder. I think we told him about Tinder. He came back yeah, and did. said, dude. Yeah, so, so, okay, so, Erica, check this shit out. Mm. We had a celebrity on the show. Okay. I won't say his name just because he's a pal. We had a male celebrity on the program. I said, you got to get Tinder. He's like, what's Tinder? I'm like, dude, it's an app. You swipe right. Fucking, you're, you're, you're getting your dick sucked. He's like, okay, I'll download it right now. So he downloads it. He comes back on the show like a month later. He's like, oh, my God. I'm like, what? My dick has not had a rest in a month. I'm like, what are you talking about? Dude. <laughs> I, my, my Tinder is on, and girls are swiping right on me like crazy. Then they come to my house, then they suck my dick, and they suck his dick the whole night. Like, the fucking, literally the whole night. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, somebody sucked your dick for like an hour? No, Mo, I was asleep, and she was sucking my dick the entire night, even when I was sleeping. Like, I would wake up maybe 3 a.m. to go, oh, what's going on? <sighs> I peek over my eye, and she's still sucking my dick. She's sucking my dick the entire night. Lucky guy. And I'm like... And I'm like, and how often is this? Four or five times a week. Different girls, different girls. I'm like, that's how you use Tinder. That's what it's for. That's what God put it on. That's what Moses brought it down the mountain for. It's for this moment and this moment alone. All right. Mm-hmm. That's true. So again, yeah. No Jahu? truer words have been said. So, Jahu. so ja, what? Yeah. Jahu. 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 Okay, Jao. Jao. So again, you know what the app is for. So if you want to be subtle about it, but you know what your goal is, just build it up. Build it up. Yeah, I will. Thanks, yeah. thanks. Thank start, you very much. Start the conversations it. with flirtatious, or, uh, flirtatious, like being flirtatious already so it's easier to get the, the sex conversation going in, within a day or two. Yep. Build That's it up right. nicely. Gotcha. All right, buddy. Thanks. Rock on, man. Thanks. Bye-bye. Gosh. I don't have Tinder. The thing is, I don't have Tinder, mm-hmm. and I don't intend downloading one. Why not? Oh, because um, you don't need ass right now. Uh, I got you. No, I get you. No, but yeah, whatever. No, no, I see you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, no. I mean, it, unnecessary. It yeah, yeah. Just have it for fun. Just, to, just have it to see how many guys try to swipe all right on you. That's all. You don't have to do anything unless you yeah. don't want to. At least have the app and just see what it's like to be ogled over. And I mean, you're on the cover of F- FHM. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god. This guy's masturbating to you right now as we speak. We're on the show here fi- fixing HIV problems, and there's a guy that's fucking jizzing on your face on the magazine. Back after this. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll return after this commercial break. Yes, so we took a plane over to Ormoc, and this is my first time. People are so friendly. They've made me feel so welcome here. The people in the township were beautiful and, and maganda. We um, visited with the kids in the town. Just the beauty and the innocence of the kids. It just went a long way for me. It touched my heart. And I love children. And just to see them, you know, these big open smiles, that can go a long way. Kids are beautiful. Today, we are very happy to um, share with her our small token of appreciation. When we went out there, we helped a small business owner at her Sorry Sorry put up a sign, and she told us her story. And to see that she's back up on her feet, working and building her business, that was very inspiring to me. Salamat, 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 salamat. With all the devastation, you know, a smile can change a moment. It sounds cliche, but I think it's true. What we've done is actually give them a retailing package wherein we further increase their capability to earn. 
What we have given Manang Bising was a mobile phone, a retailer SIM, and a seed money or a startup money that allows her to sell load. To the mobile number, the amount of load. I think it's a natural instinct for all of us to help out along the way and give back. Globe Telecom has been an incredible partner with me in terms of allowing me to raise awareness about what they're doing as well. And I saw what their mission is in nation building, culture building, and brand building. And I thought, you know, this is a really solid vision. Well, first off, I learned that the strength of the Filipino people is paramount. And even with all the challenges that have come their way, I think they're back up and very positive and hopeful that they're towns and cities are going to rebuild and it's inspiring to see that. One big smile, smile, smile. I think, you know, programs like Project Wonderful is something that's huge here. Coming out and building homes and sending materials and sending um, financial aid is always just an incredible thing. I think, you know, throwing money at the problem is one way to go, but you know, what Globe Telecom is doing is they're inspiring small business owners to get up on their feet on their own and have the responsibility of running a business. And I think that there's something to that as well. It's very inspiring. Um, two girls, one cup. <laughs> I heard there was this video going around on the internet some years ago. Um, because we're two girls, me and Nicole, and a cup where we get all our topics from the cup. It's not lustful. <laughs> the show is about shoes, bags, friends, girlfriends, gossip, current events, everyday life. I don't know. Dicks on my head, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and the dick on Nicole's head. Well, we got a segment called Let's Be Honest. Would you do whoever? Would you do Max Eichenmanns? I would. <laughs> Cisco, because there's a bro code, but there's no written Cisco. Uh, truth or dare? Kupal people? Bullshit. We share pussy. <laughs> Not really. Two girls, one cup. You should watch the show. What do you think is ailing local football? Well, politics. Should athletes be endorsers? Yes, why not? Why did you refuse to be the Haskell's head coach countless times? I've been there, done that. Too much politics, like I said. Uh, like I posted one time a few days ago, coaching is a thankless job. With what's happening with Michael Weiss, uh, we talked about it already before, uh, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, it happens. And I said, you should know that because you've worked also somewhere in other countries as well. Uh, there's no such thing as a permanent job in coaching, in any sport. Why do you say thankless? Well, the, you're only as good as the wins. And then that's it. Uh... Plus, of course, there are other factors like uh, there's respect, honor, honesty, and all of this. Because you're just a coach, you're not a manager. Uh, you're not the association, you're not the institution. So you, as a coach, you're just an employee. So you're as good only as, as the wins that you have. It's Good Times with Mo, the podcast. Call the show tonight and get your love problem sir. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast. And visit www.motwister.com. Back on the podcast here. It is a Wednesday night. No show tomorrow. I want to remind everyone because it is Independence Day. Okay. Yes, we have. You take a break. That is a good thing. Everybody. What do you mean? I mean, I mean, you're so busy. I mean, with, yeah. but, the, but that's a good thing. But it's also a good time for you to take a break and breathe. It is. It's cool. But you know, listen. I work from home. I never leave my house. Um, if if I wasn't doing this show, I'd be sitting on the internet. Like it is busy. 
mm-hmm. but it's not busy like you guys think it is, I think. Oh, it's busy. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it's not hard. There you go. Because I'm wearing my boxer shorts now. I'm wearing my slippers brush, too. <laughs> no, it, it is it's because I, I have the luxury of working at home. So yeah. I literally just get up. I sit down. I listen to your HIV problems or your fucking Tinder issues. And that's how I start my day is talking to you guys about your life. It's actually kind of nice. It gets the ball rolling in for me. So not a lot of stress. It's, it's good. Unless some calls are very difficult. Like we have had incredibly difficult calls. During the commercial break, Erica was like, what's the most difficult call you've had? And I'm like, boy, that's a very difficult answer. Sorry for still saying the word again. It's just I don't know. We've, had, we've taken... What could it be? 45,000 phone calls already? But what were you saying mm-hmm. earlier? This 14-year-old girl or something? Oh, well, well okay. I, I, see, I don't know if that was even the answer. I just remember now, three weeks ago, I cried on this program. Because, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, what so happened? Difficult. Uh, girl called from Russia, from mm-hmm. Moscow. Her 16-year-old son, um, who's gay, okay. and she's very supportive of him being homosexual, uh, was at school. He's a scholar, scholarship student. So mm-hmm. he's there going to school for free at a good school because of his grades and all of that stuff. Well, <clears throat> his uh, a couple of bullies in his school uh, strangled. Uh, what is uh, strangled him and made them uh, suck it, suck their dick. He made him suck their dick. And uh, since then, his grades have fallen. He's lost his scholarship and he's just what fifteen? Was he fifteen? Mm-hmm. Sixteen? Something like that. And this mom was like, "I'm supposed to be there for my child." Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to protect my child. I'm, I'm here in Russia working for the benefit of my child. And I can't be there when some guys fucking take him against, throw him in a room, choke him, and force him to have fucking suck his dick. You know what my reaction to that's, that that's is? That's awful. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, actually not, not related to the problem that you just said, to the call that you said. I'm really impressed because you are such a father. You're very reactive to situations involving families. Oh yeah, yeah. No, the family thing is super. It's super my thing. Like, yeah. like you know, I, I again, I live here in this part of the world because of my family. If, if I had the choice, I'd still be in New York. I love New York. I talk about it all the time, and I, great, my life was there. But it takes one phone call from my mom or one phone call from my sister to say, "Hey, Such listen, it would person. be nice. It would be nice if you come home and let's just all kind of hang out and be close." I'm like, "All right," and route, and I got to pack my shit and change my lifestyle completely. To, to, to revolve it around my family's wishes. And that is very so, sweet and very impressive. Kudos to yeah, you. Yeah, and it'll keep you single forever. Because, I mean, nobody's going <laughs> to like... No, I, still buy you. I love my family, but I don't want to yeah. be single forever. Well, no, I mean, it, it, but, like you can't just have a girlfriend like, uh, okay, so you're leaving at Why? Because your mom says so. It's like, <laughs> hello. It's like, yeah, well, how old are you? I'm like, no, all right, fine. But yeah, it's, it's difficult to... To, to have a bunch of friends because of it, but I, I, I mean, this is my life. I enjoy yeah, you don't it. And mind. I've had a great, yeah, and I've had a great run at this life. Like if I, unfortunately, if I died tomorrow tragically, I'd be like, shit, that would suck. But hey, listen, what a run I had. Yeah, what a great run. Good. Um, what's this? Oh, and then, okay, the 14-year-old. So there's this 14-year-old who called once. Okay. Who's never met her dad. Who only knows him because of pictures. Mm-hmm. Right. And she's friends, so her best friend, uh, kind of like a best friend by default, like, you know, she's her best friend because they live in the same neighborhood or whatever. She's like 17 or 18 or something like that. So she had a best friend who was a little bit older than her. And uh, one day, I forgot, I forgot the details of the story because it was so, so quite some time back. Uh, one day, she goes to her best friend's house, opens the door to her bedroom, sees her dad that she's never met, fucking her best friend. What? Full on banging her best friend. Of course, this girl calls the show. She's in tears and she's shocked. And, but... He, the, the father that she's only known in photos is 69ing her uh, teenage best friend. Oh my so, gosh. Good stuff. Yeah. That's the part where I go, hmm, what do I do here? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> good see. luck. I'm sorry Ooh. for your situation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Um, what do I say? Yeah. So there are those moments. All right. So today's been easy, actually. Right, it's been so, a yeah. nice little walk in the park. And the next coming calls are even easier than the ones we had earlier. So here we go. Um, let's start with line five and talk to El- Elrica, who is 18 years old. In Japan. Hi, Elrica. Hi, Elrica. Mushi, mushi. Hello, Pa. Hi. <laughs> What's Hello? up? Hello? Yeah, hi, Erica. Hi, Pa. Hi. Hold on one second. Pico. Hmm? I'm uh, itching to ask her about her childhood trauma. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, me too. But I don't know if mm-hmm. she's 18 and she's petite. Because, you know, I, if she said she was 24, then uh-huh. I know for sure she yeah. was molested at mm-hmm. 7 or 6. Mm-hmm. 
but she's 18, so there might just be a physical character. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at her Skype picture. She looks pretty young. She looks tiny, so it's not. Yeah. It's not trauma. No, no. It's. I think it's a. It's a body thing. Okay. Oh. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Elrica. Hello. Were Hi, you sweetheart. molested at six years old? No, I wasn't. Any trauma? Any death in the family when you were young? Um, my father. My father. He... Bam! Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Told you. How, how old were you when he died? <laughs> um, I, no, no, no. My father died when I was six. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Good job. Oh, sorry. I said seven, but it was six. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're celebrating your father's death. No, 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 no. no. It's just, I like being right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and... You hear that, Erica? You I hear did. that? Yeah. You, did you hear it? You know why? Why? You want to see with me? Yeah, listen, it's, listen it's, her it's voice. It's combined 21 years yeah. of uh, me she's, and Mo. She, yeah. yeah, she's 18 years old. She sounds like a six year old. That means what? at one point in her life, when she was six or seven, something, something really, really bad awful, happened, yeah. awful happened to her. How do you and know she these reverts things, to that voice? It's called Philippine Genius, baby. Oh. Uh, it, it's just <laughs> 45,000 phone calls we've <laughs> taken through the years. But that's, that's see, you, you see that voice there, mm-hmm, Elrica? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. We people can not people, but some people will be able to guess that something happened to you when you were younger, kind of sad, something awful, because you you've kept the voice of the age that uh, it happened, just to mm-hmm. let you know. So anyway, all right. Nevertheless, so what's up, Erica? Elrica, sorry. <laughs> good times. Hello. Yeah. What do you got? Ah, uh, ano po? Paano po ba malalaman kung talagang Tino, talagang talagang mahal mo yung isang tao kahit na malayo kayo. Boy, you're 18, huh? That's a uh, six-year-old voice, 12-year-old question, 18-year-old body. How do you? How a lot of you levels know, there. Yeah, how will you know if you really love someone despite the distance? Hmm. Okay, are you asking because you love somebody and you want to know if you love them, or somebody loves you and they want and you want to know if they really love you? What, what, what are so we that, working with? The second one. The second one. The second, yeah, yeah, of course. So, you, you would so know you, if you want to know someone. if this person really loves you despite yes. the distance. Yes, yeah. yes. Where is, where is where this is boy? He? New Zealand. New Zealand. Ooh. Philippines <laughs> is closer. Um, and are you in a formal relationship with this boylet? No. Where, where am you? Am you? you? Okay. Have is you met? 35, is he 35 yes. years old? No, he, um, she, uh, he is 18. Same Excellent. Age. Okay. Just me. How did you guys meet? I mean, over the, the internet? Did you guys actually meet somewhere and then just yeah, we, had to go separate ways? We're actually friends in the Philippines. Ah. Mm, yes. Then you had to move to Japan. Tapos siya naman in New Zealand. Up, up. Okay. Well, uh, you know, if you're if you're MUing and you're talking to each other every day on Skype and, and WhatsApp and Viber mm-hmm. and all that good mm-hmm. shit, uh, that's as that's. Here's what I want to explain to you, Elrica. This is the best that's going to be for the both of you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so whether whether you're going to get some sort of confirmation from us that he loves you or not, we don't know because we're not him and we're not talking to him. But if you're talking to him every single day and every minute of the day as 18-year-olds mm. do and all of that, then you can go ahead and confidently say that you love each other. And, then, and, 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 and find solace in that. Like, find happiness in the fact that you guys love each other. But the reality is it's not going to work out. Mm. What you have right now is the best you'll ever have. And one day, soon, mm. you guys are just going to eventually drift apart. You have to accept all of those things. Because 18-year-olds, most of the time, Erica, 99% mm. of the time, they can't, you can't do a relationship Japan, New Zealand. Yeah. It's, it's just it's yeah, not possible. Yeah. So why is it important for you to know if the person loves you? Because are, well, you, that, well, my, my answer to that, Erica, was just to, to find, find happiness in this moment. Okay. That this is the best it's ever going to be. And from mm. here on, it's just going to decline. If you're okay with that, then good times. Have fun. Pero, pero ano kasi, mag, ano, uwi daw siya. Plano niya daw mawi ng, ano, 
next year, March, tas ako din uwi din po ako. And then after that, vacation lang ba yun? Or are you guys gonna go back again to Japan so, and New Zealand? Ako po, pupunta na talaga sa Pilipinas sa pag-aaral, tapos siya, babalik siya sa New Zealand. Well, you know, Paul, Still? well, just to, you know, just to, Mo, she's 18. What I'm trying yeah, to say is... I don't want her to fucking get married or get anything really stupid because they're super in love. I want to tell them how it is. She's 18. Hey, you're going to waste time at this wonderful age of 18 following around a boy who's in fucking Auckland. But the thing is, what I'm trying to say here is a lot of things can happen. Anything could happen. But at this point, Eldrika, I think it would be best if you do not expect so much. It would be nice, of course, mm -hmm. to see him when you guys get back here in the Philippines. But if he will be going back to New Zealand, again, you, mm -hmm. you're back again to that particular situation where distance mm -hmm. is a thing. So just don't expect too much. I mean, just try to yeah, be happy. Have fun. Yeah, just have fun. Have fun. Have fun. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, but but what I, what I want to just kind of drill in your head here, uh, Elric, is mm -hmm. while you're having fun, also realize that it just doesn't get better than this. It's just going to be eventual decline so i don't want you to waste mm -hmm. two or three years of this uh, two or three years on your life on this mm -hmm. i want you to have a good run maybe mm -hmm. a year maybe six months maybe eight months of being in love and all that good stuff but then you have to know that it's going to end because the guy has to either move to manila you move to manila he moves to japan mm -hmm. you move to auckland whatever <laughs> one of those you have, have to, to be happen. in one place and even oh. if you do do that i would say don't do it because you're 18 and you should never be in a relationship with the guy that you're with at 18 for long term mm. this is all teenage shit man enjoy it just enjoy it while it lasts the, don't watch fault in our stars or anything i did watch fault in our stars and i liked it i know but it gives <laughs> these kids ideas like oh yeah this is all true love but yeah, but but that's right, Elrica. I think it would be best for you to just um, not yeah, invest yeah. so much emotion to the guy, mm -hmm. but keep keep the friendship. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Boilet lang siya. Boilet. Boilet. That's Boilet. all. Uh -uh. <laughs> and you will grow up. You will become 20, 23, 24, and you'll mm -hmm. expand your you know with much more experiences out there. You'll grow and you'll know that it was the right decision not to settle. Or not to decide mm -hmm. on anything drastic at the age of 18. All right, baby mm -hmm. doll. Thank you, Paul. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Mushi mushi. Bye bye, sweetheart. Where are you, Tokyo? Uh, Saitama po. Ah, okay. I have no idea where that is. Hi. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. One. Bye bye. Oh, she even says it like a Japanese. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Cute. Oh, fuck. What? I forgot to tell her that. S my girl, Sola Aoi, followed me on Twitter. <laughs> she's still there. She's still there. And why would you want to tell her about this because girl? she's in Japan. But the Hello. thing is, we've been trying to protect her from different ideas, and then you're going to tell her. Elrica, you know who Sola Aoi is? Sola? Yeah. <laughs> and she's still there. Aoi Sola? No. She's an actress in Japan. Mo, mo, I love mo. her. I don't she know followed her. Me. That's a good thing. So, you don't have to know look her. her. <laughs> look her up. Type her. S O L A. Shut up, Mo. Space. I see. Is she a porno? 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 <laughs> how? Dare how did you, you know, Elrica? How did you know of that? No, my friend. My friend yeah. told me about that. Yeah, she's fucking but hot. She's and very hot. She, she's uh -huh. a superstar. Okay, yeah. go study. Yeah. <laughs> Read something else right. or something. She followed me on Twitter. So if you see her, if you see her walking around on the streets of Tokyo or wherever. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Pico, can you turn off your fucking microphone, please? So I can talk to this girl without having the staff. Yeah, no, Voice is louder than yeah. mine. Oh, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> if you see Sola Aoi on in Japan walking around, can you please go mm -hmm. up to her and say, you just followed the most <laughs> handsome, smartest man in, in the country and just really build me up strong. <laughs> Some inconsistency, okay? Mo. Yeah, all right? Just say, oh, my God, I saw that you followed him on Twitter. You have to know he's just the most amazing person. <laughs> you, did a good, you, get, sure. you did the right thing. All right. Thank you, sure, Elrica. Sure. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. look for her. Bye, Elrica. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 How old are you, uh, Miss Padilla? I'm 27. I'm turning 28 this November. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, cool. Oh. 
And uh, the guy you're dating, uh, what team does he play for? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not dating anybody, unfortunately. Yeah. How many of the basketball players hit on you? Uh, well, by the way, for those who don't know, we haven't established it. Erica here does the PBA, courtside reporting, by the way, yes. for the PBA. And you are on what days? Um, it depends. depends on the, when we're scheduled. But um, I cover three times a week, three to four times a week. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Any the, the ballers they hit a lot. They must hit on you. Lots of them, right? No, actually, no. I mean, th there were guys that did, but uh, not a lot of them. Uh, maybe four to five people, four to five players. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just right. really. I mean, and that's okay. I don't yeah, have any yeah. problems with that. Are they? Is there a team rule that the, the you know the basketball players can't hit on the uh, the uh, like courtside reporters? Like, do the coaches tell them that they're not allowed? Like, you know how I think in the NBA there's something like I mean, I, th I think Dwight Howard impregnated one of the cheerleaders, or Eric Spolstra dates one of the cheerleaders, but within like they try to tell you not to. No, actually, they're shit. not. Uh, I don't think there's a rule rule about it. I mean, Patricia Bermudez, he's on Married a Basketball Player. Ah, yeah, Vince. Vince, he's on, and one of the courtside reporters actually dated one of, one of the guys in the PBA. I don't think there's a rule. Um, mm. uh, yeah, so. Yeah, all right. No. Cool. All right. <laughs> because if there was a rule, you'd be like, shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I mean, I would always say that these guys, not all of them are douchebags as you know other people may assume um, they're actually gentlemen and uh, it's unfair it's really unfair to generalize um, that PBA players okay yeah there may be not douchebags but they're certainly not sharp right not 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 a bunch of smart dudes again again right. I, I know actually um, sports industry has evolved so much and mm -hmm. that you have to you have to have that certain smarts to stay in this kind of field. It's not anymore all about skills and talent. You have to have that certain intellect. So again... Really? Do you? Yeah. Because I, I, I'm just trying to defend them. I'm just no, trying to protect if you them. Wanna be, if you want to be a certain star, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you take you, LeBron the, or uh, Kobe. That's what I'm trying right? to say. The, the, the game, the industry has evolved to that kind of level that everybody is very competitive. Everybody is trying to study what they're doing. It's not just about training, training. Okay, I'm going to do this every day. My, I'm going to harass my body or whatever. They're just focusing on my athleticism and all. No, everybody has, you know, everybody getting into the business are also smart people because they know that the competition is tight. So that's why they're, th they're doing extra studies on things. They're researching on what particular, what particular um, facility in whatever part of the world gives you this kind of training so you can better hone your talent in this and that. So I'm just saying that it's not, just, it's not how it was before. And the th now, 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 but, but will you tell me this, though. I mean, are they, are they awful interviews? Because... In my time, rock stars and athletes, the worst interviews. The worst. <laughs> there are, you know. Worst. <laughs> Soft spoken, I'm too big for this shit kind of <laughs> attitude. Maybe in the beginning, I have experienced um, some players not able to articulate themselves very well. But over time, maybe the comfort level also of uh, familiarizing myself to them. They know me and they know that I, you know, um, I ask questions. Easy questions, easy enough for them to express whatever they want to say. So eventually, I found that common ground so I can get whatever I need from them and at the same time, not make it hard for myself and not so, sure. so I won't get frustrated with whatever answers I need from them. Sure. All right. But I'll tell you this, though. I mean, in the future, mm -hmm. you ballers listening, you have to learn how to answer if you want to be a superstar. You have That's to. That's true. It, it, now, now I know your James Yap and all that stuff. They don't, but it'll change. It will not because change. it changes in the NBA. It changes because we are a smaller world every day, and in that smaller world, we're gonna need to know more about like the way you carry yourself and the way you speak and the way you you know how so smart you are. I mean, exactly. You'll, like I said, you take a LeBron or a Kobe who are not college educated men, but when they articulate themselves, they sound like scholars out there. 
Exactly. Because and, it comes with superstardom. Mm -mm. That's what I'm trying to say. And we are getting there. And the business is slowly evolving, getting to that kind of situation. And they are equipping themselves also. The people getting in the industry are equipping themselves by being more knowledgeable about things, about other things. So they have more to offer because the world is evolving also into a more, the, a, a world that requires people to be more well-rounded. Gotcha. So, yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. I see you there. All right. So yeah. All and right. to be fair with the basketball players, yes, they are smart. They are, they're not, they're not all basketball. As people Ten percent of them are smart. I would put a number out there. I respect your opinion on that. Fifteen. Fifteen. To be generous, because you're my friend. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's it. That's my final offer. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll take that. Um, let's go to Koji, twenty-one Koji. years old. Koji. Mahati, online six. Hi, Koji. What's hi, up? Hi, Koji. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, Koji. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Hi. Hello. Just waiting Hi, for you, Koji. Here. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hello. Koji, yes, we can hear you. What is your question? Hello. Jesus. Koji. We can hear you. What is your question, Koji? Stui. <laughs> Koji. Never mind. We're gonna talk about basketball players still again. Hold on. Oh, can you guys call them back, please? Hello? Or like disconnect them? In the yeah, there. Koji, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, okay. Cool. All right, so what's your question, buddy? You're on the show. Let's go. Yeah, so my question may be simple, but uh, maybe short and simple, but it really means a lot. So I just want to ask uh, how to move on. Because many, because many people ask me, um, because, many, because many people uh, ask me questions on how, do, how can they move on. Mm -mm. So I just want to ask also. You're moving on from what? A relationship? Um, yeah, yeah, okay. yes. Um, ano ba? How do you do it, Erica? Well, again, ano, I've, I've said this a million times, I've only had one boyfriend, so one ex-boyfriend. And the my coping mechanism then, three years ago when I broke up with him, as it may it may sound cheesy, it may sound dramatic, but just find something that you're grateful for every day. Find other yeah, things. Yeah, that's pretty cheesy. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. I mean, no, there... yeah, I, I didn't say it was incorrect. But yeah, yeah. That's pretty cheesy. But the thing yeah. is, there are other things to look forward to. It's just too bad. The thing is, shit, it's just too bad that I broke up with you. But the thing is, the good thing is, I'm not going to die. Good thing is, I have work. I have something to be busy with. There are other guys that are interested in me. Um, I know that I'm going to grow from this experience. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for many things. Find something that you are thankful for and it will be easier for you to move on and then throw whatever gifts that the person maybe have given you so you won't be reminded of of your really ex. you get rid of it no what, i'm what just saying i didn't i didn't get rid of anything i, I mean here's my thing here, here, here's here's my here's where i'm at man about the moving on process uh okay. how old are you again uh what are you, 21, 21. Right, good fantastic Yes, yes. It, it, it's a mix of, I think, what Erica said, which is try to tr try to find other things to kind of to, to, to take your attention away. And then there's m my advice, which I always tell people is understand, absorb, embrace that it is, in fact, a part of life to be mm -hmm. heartbroken, that we all go through it, that you should... Be thankful for it at a young age because if you not if you don't break up at 20 or 19 or 18, you will you will in fact be miserable at 25, 26, 27. All of these things, I don't want to sound cheesy, which these are lessons. These are not yeah. just lessons. These are mandatory things that have to happen in, in your life. life for you to succeed in life. If you go through life without being brokenhearted even once. I don't think I will trust you with any major decisions that we will have to make together, whether it be like friends, colleagues, or whatever. You have to be broken up. You have to be obliterated. You have to cry. You have to feel hopeless. You have to feel helpless. You have to feel all of that mm -hmm. because it is what needs to happen to you 
at a young age for you to be able to cope with the real problems of the 30-year-old and the 35 and the 40 when you don't have enough money to pay your house, when your fucking family member dies, when you lose your job. Those are true problems. Yeah. This heartbroken bullshit yeah. at 19 and 20 is fucking nothing but the stepping stone of issues that you need to learn from so that you can tackle the real big ones come 30, 35, 40, and onwards. Yep. Well said. You're going to get older. You know older. what I mean? Yeah, you're going to get older and there will be yes. bigger things ahead. This is just what you're experiencing at, at 21 will be nothing compared. Even when you just turn 22. What I'm trying to say is expect more things, brighter things in the future. And at the same time, more heartaches too. So Yeah, yeah. Brighter things in the future, way more tragedy to deal with mm -hmm. in the future. That this is fucking nothing. In, in, in fact, it is necessary. And I'm sorry, but you're just, actually, you're just starting with the pain of growing up at 21. Yeah. You're just starting. But again, I don't want to sound negative about this. The reason why I emphasize yeah, being, right. besides, I was very emphatic about being thankful is, is because that will be a good tool for you to really look forward to other things because the negative parts of life is inevitable. Whether, exactly. it's, whether it's breaking up with someone, there's dying, there's losing your job, there's whatever. So the point no is... no money. No. Oh, so the point there's is... Typhoon, this is, take your house away. This is just the beginning. <laughs> this is just the beginning and there will be more. But it's not enough reason for you not to be happy. That there, as yeah. much as there, there will be reasons that will make you sad, there will be reasons too that will make you happy. Yeah, and, and, and listen, if you, uh, if you end up marrying your girlfriend when you're 21, I'll punch you in the face for being stupid. <laughs> There's that too. Like you'll have a black eye for me because it's so fucking dumb to do that. If I married my girlfriend at 21 right now, I would be miserable. And you will not have good I'm, times with Mo. I'm miserable just thinking about if I married her. <laughs> you sound like it. <laughs> See that? So God bless breakups. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. But good luck. Yeah. And have fun. Yeah, Kochi. Uh, Come yeah, on, you're 21. One more question. Get Tinder. Swipe right. Get a dick. Get a fucking mouth on your dick. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That's he's 21. Yeah, okay, that's what's your question? Fine. I think uh -huh. yeah. he was 15. I would tell him yeah, the same just, thing. Just, just one more question. How can you say that you are mature enough to be in a relationship? Nah, who cares? <laughs> Whatever. If you like a girl, she likes you. Go date for fucking six months a year. Break up with her. Move on to the next one. And it's hard. Oh, nice hard one. It's hard to qualify maturity. Yeah, I don't want you to be mature. The next thing you're mature, you, you, you might making stupid decisions like marriage and kids. That's a problem. You guys, you guys, you think you're mature at 16 years old. You date somebody for three years. That means you're 19. You date with them four years. You're 20. Then what do you start? Your conversation is, oh, what should we name our kids? We should start having kids. We should start thinking about settling down. Maybe I should start making ipon para makabahay na tayo at 21 and 20 because we've been together five years. Then true misery sets in. <laughs> oh. Well, that's true. You make awful decisions when you start thinking about maturity. You're 21. Go we'll out there, fun. fucking have fun. Get drunk. Yes, I will. Get a couple fucking bar yes, fights. Bang, bang some chicks. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Get a master's degree. Obviously, obviously, he's liking your advice, nice. Mo. <laughs> all right, get out of here, Koji. Bye bye. Bye, Koji. Man, I cannot stress this enough, Erica. Okay. Do not ever. Married in a relationship <laughs> ah. for longer than two years with anybody. Not longer than... Fucking, yeah, not even longer than a year and a half. Two years, two years. We should have a government rule. Like We have to like fucking monitor people. How long have you been together? How old are you? 19. How long have you been together? Oh, since we were 17. Okay, you're out. You're in jail. You know, if, if you go past two years, like don't do it. It's bad for you. It's bad Why? for your health. Why? Because... Because uh, you start making fucking awful decisions about the future together when you're 20 and you're 21. That's dangerous. Well, that's you're strange. 27. Think about if you married your fucking ex-boyfriend. You're one and only. Mm -hmm. How shit your life would be right now. Very different. Very different and very shit. <laughs> so if you're young, that's 25, 27, and below, 
If you're in a relationship longer than two years, maximum you need two years, an automatic breakup, automatic. Okay, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna suggest that they should pass that as a law. I don't care if, how in love you are. No fucking way you should be dating longer than two years when you're that age. Well, it makes sense. I, I actually, I, I, I understand where you're coming from because it can be limiting to people growing up. They're not seeing other things. So yeah, I do get You can point. look at it that way or people will grow up. And that's the danger is they'll grow up without you. And then all of a sudden, the person you're stuck with that you thought was your panghabang buhay is a completely different individual. Mm -hmm. That's true. By the time they're 27, 28, 30, and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Dude, again, I say it so many times, I'm 36. I'm 36? Yeah, I'm 36. I'm completely different person than when I was 29. 29 is pretty old already. Mm -hmm. many, many, for many of you, that's marrying age. You're still growing. Do not get married till you're in your 30s. Then you can start get confident about the person you're with and the person you are. Yeah, I agree with that. God I'm actually thinking of getting married. Nox, getting married to lang akong boyfriend. I mean, an ideal mm -hmm. year, an, an ideal age for me would have to be about 31, 32. Minimum. Minimum. Now, I understand the, the need to have kids and all of that stuff. If you want a shitload of kids, like five or six of these motherfuckers running around, mm. then yeah, maybe you want to start a little earlier. But that's a bad idea in itself as well. Yeah. Well, well two or three, be happy. And I don't mind adopting Good. anyway, so. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Let's take a break. When we come back, last chance for your calls. You're good, Erica. We'll take a couple more and we're out of here. No problem at all. Let's do all right, that. Fantastic. On the cover of FHM this June, she looks stunning. Erica Padilla on the show tonight. Back with more of your calls. Stay tuned. We'll return after this commercial break. During and after what happened sa Yolanda, seeing everybody helping out each other, that's what really made sense to me. Since I'm a fashion stylist, I would always want what looks good together and finding the pieces that would look great together. I think for us as Filipinos to get up and mobilize to help other Kababayans in need, that's natural to us. But for us in this case, to never give up and never get tired. Whatever your job is, it doesn't matter. During that time, we just all went there, helped each other, and moved the world. of the devastation I just I don't know there was something inside me that just felt like nothing else in my life mattered I work very closely with Dawid Kalinga I was so happy that Globe chose them too because as an organization I feel that their love and care for the people and the communities is something that I don't see enough you know I just find that that was the most special one for me it's a good feeling especially when you know when you're helping some other people Especially when you see them so happy because they're gonna have a new house, new home. It also means that we're showing them that we're involved, that we care, that they're not alone. The top executives were here today. who's a new ambassador. Well, it's an eye-opening thing. Through activities like this, it just goes to show how much commitment GLOBE has to, to this effort. See it for yourselves and participate, spend a few days here and help build some homes. The GLOBE's Project Wonderful is all about creating a wonderful world for our consumers, our businesses, as well as the nation. It's the sort of the way the GLOBE's putting together all of the building blocks we've built over the last four years. Remember, the wonderful world includes the nation. 
And so we also want to make sure that people who are underprivileged, people who have been devastated by the typhoons, also somehow in their own way, live a wonderful world. I think everybody can help. And our own little ways we can help just by tweeting, using social media, and using your voice. Walang iwanan in the sense that we're here when we start laying out the bricks, when we start making the bricks, when we filter the sand, when we paint the house. But also, more than that, it's restoring the dignity of the people that have lost so much. This whole experience reminds us that nation building can be as simple and meaningful as lives you're building. And when we do things that exceed what is expected of us, we create wonderful. And yes, that's wonderful. Um, two girls, one cup. I heard there was this video going around on the internet some years ago. Um, because we're two girls, me and Nicole, and a cup where we get all our topics from the cup. It's not lustful. <laughs> the show is about shoes, bags, friends, girlfriends, gossip, current events, everyday life. I don't know. Dicks on my head, apparently. <laughs> and, and the dick on Nicole's head. Um, we got a segment called Let's Be Honest. Would you do whoever? Would you do Max Eigenmans? I would. <laughs> Cisco, because there's a bro code, but there's no written Cisco. Uh, truth or dare? Kupal people. Bullshit. We share pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Two girls, one cup. You should watch the show. So we, we took a plane over to Ormoc, and this is my first time. Thank you. People are so friendly. They made me feel so welcome here. The people in the township were beautiful and, and maganda. We um, visited with the kids in the town. Just the beauty and the innocence of the kids. It just went a long way for me. It touched my heart. And I love children, and just to see them, you know, these big open smiles, that can go a long way. Kids are beautiful. Today, we are very happy to um, share with her our small token of appreciation. When we went out there, we helped a small business owner at her sorry, sorry, put up her sign, and she told us her story. And to see that she's back up on her feet working and building her business. That was very inspiring to me. Salamat, 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 salamat. With all the devastation, you know, a smile can change a moment. It sounds cliche, but I think it's true. What we've done is actually give them a retailing package wherein we further increase their capability to earn. What we have given Manang Bising was a mobile phone, a retailer SIM, and a seed money or a startup money that allows her to sell loads. So the mobile number, the amount of loads. I think it's a natural instinct for all of us to help out along the way and give back. Globe Telecom has been an incredible partner with me in terms of allowing me raise awareness about what they're doing as well. And I saw what their mission is in nation building, culture building, and brand building. And I thought, you know, this is a really solid vision. Well, first off, I learned that the strength of the Filipino people is paramount. And even with all the challenges that have come their way, I think they're back up and very positive and hopeful that they're Towns and cities are going to rebuild, and it's inspiring to see that. One big smile, smile, smile. I think, you know, programs like Project Wonderful is something that's huge here. Coming out and building homes and sending materials and sending um, financial aid, 
is always just an incredible thing. I think, you know, throwing money at the problem is one way to go, but you know, what Globe Telecom is doing is they're inspiring small business owners to get up on their feet on their own and have the responsibility of running a business. And I think that there's something to that as well. It's very inspiring. Um, two girls, one cup. <laughs> I heard there was this video going around on the internet some years ago. Um, because we're two girls, me and Nicole, and a cup where we get all our topics from the cup. It's not lustful. <laughs> the show is about shoes, bags, friends, girlfriends, gossip, current events, everyday life. I don't know. Dicks on my head, apparently. <laughs> and, and the dick on Nicole's head. So we got a segment called Let's Be Honest. Would you do whoever? Would you do Max Eichenmanns? I would. <laughs> Cis code. Because there's a bro code, but there's no written Cis code. Uh, truth or dare. Kupal people. Bullshit. We share pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Two girls, one cup. You should watch the show. Good Times with Mo, the podcast. Call the show tonight and get your love problem answered. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast. And visit www.motwister.com. So, uh, Eric and I are having a debate here, off air, whether it's best to find yourself an intelligent partner or a dumb one. Mm -hmm. And uh I love the dumb one. Like well, that's that's, that's the person you want. That's the person you want to get. Nope. Less I dissecting. I'm just saying that I'm I'm not. Of course, I will hold up to my identity. I choose to believe that I'm a smart, strong woman. But I would still rather choose someone smarter than me, stronger than me, whom I can learn from. And I don't mind following. And I don't hmm. mind. You know, I don't mind. Well, see, you have to have that mentality going in then. That that oh, that I'm not always right. I'm not always right. That's true. That's correct. That, that, because because smart people are very very difficult to get a smart person to admit that they're wrong. The thing is, I think I'm rare. Ha 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 ha. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, you know, if if my opinion is asked about something, okay, I'll give it. But the thing is, if I need to shut up, then I'll shut up. I don't have to always. But see, that's yeah, that is rare. You know what I'm saying? That's very rare, especially I, for an attractive, accomplished female as you are. I think I think I got it from my father's upbringing. Because um, my dad is in the military. My dad is in the military and he always tells us, there's no need for you to volunteer information. There's no need for you to prove that you're right because if you are right, then it will just show. True. Love that. So the thing is, the thing is, for me, I may be... I always say, if your king says black and you firmly believes and you firmly believe that it's supposed to be white, how will you resolve that? Someone has to give. And I mean, looking at my characteristic, I think I'm the type of person who can give up. And it doesn't mean that I'm giving up my identity. It's just saying that I'd rather choose to take care of the person I love instead of proving that I'm right. That's just more you know, important for me. One of one of the one of the more difficult things for people to do is to say, I don't know the answer. Mm. And I feel when you hang out with smart people a lot or people who think they're smart, they never say they don't know the answer. Mm. And it to me gets fucking frustrating. Like my more difficult relationships that I've had in the past have been with girls who are smart or educated, maybe not smart, but educated and, and, and yeah, I guess smart. Um, and our biggest fights is because of their inability or my inability to say the word, 
the phrase, I don't know. I don't know the answer. And my best relationships were with the ones who were least bright because in the least bright or quote unquote dumb, they know they're dumb. And they'll just stop and say, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. And, and it saves from fighting. It saves from going, oh, okay. Because what pisses me off most are posers. People who, who, who show to be, yeah, who show to be sharper and know it all, who try to finish my sentences and are completely off uh -oh. with them. Like, if I go, here's what I'm trying to say, and they go, yeah, you're trying to say that, and I'm like, uh, fuck no, that's so <laughs> far from what I was trying to say. Then we start, then all of a sudden fights occur. Mm -hmm. And I've been in relationships like that, and those are very difficult relationships because you have a person pretending to know the answers when they in fact don't. And one of the huge diseases is the inability to say the phrase, I don't know the answer. Actually, I don't think we're debating here because I'm coming off from the point of view of a woman, and the thing is with me, I don't have any problem playing dumb. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't have any problem submitting. I don't have any problem following. If then my, you're in good shape. Okay, thanks. So then I'm you're gonna. In good shape. So I'm gonna find my intelligent person someday. Right. Okay. You, listen, you should. We should all strive to find an intelligent person to be with. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the capability to uh, to 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 accept that you could be wrong at times or that you're not as sharp as the other person. You, you know what happens sometimes is like, you see, th th this is what I always tell myself. Never talk too, like, I know this is weird, never talk too much because I talk like fucking forever, but mm -hmm. never, too, never talk too much about a subject around people you don't really know well mm -hmm. because that subject you're talking about, you could be standing next to an expert and he will thoroughly embarrass you, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Oh, I'm not. that's why. Like, what if you know it's people who walk around? Who, like, for example, people say who don't know I'm in the radio business. Mm -mm. Would and I'm in a I'm in a circle of people, and they like, oh, I just I just got into radio like two years ago, and yeah, but I'll tell you this industry. Da, 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 da. And mm -hmm. I sit there and I'm like, oh, and now I'm just waiting for you to slip, yeah. because I have twenty years, yeah. and immense success. Yep, immense. And that's what I'm trying I'm to I'm waiting for you to slip. And that's, yeah, what go, I'm sorry. that's what I'm trying to say with what I learned from my dad. I mean, there's a good time for every for anybody to just if it's a good time uh, for you to shut up, then choose that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If there, no, I love it. If there's I mean, you will have your opportunity to speak up and just wait for it. You don't have to always volunteer yourself for it. Because at the end of the day, your truth your truth will always come out, whether it's intelligence, whether it's beauty, whether it's an expertise on something, your truth will always come out because it's natural and innate in you. So, so yeah, I agree with yeah, you there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I all agree right, with all you right. there. Fair enough. All I'm saying is, don't be posers. Don't be posers, do not don't be pretend. Posers. I'll look for that. Actually, that, well, that's what I look for. That's what I'm smelling. I'm a, is there a poser around here? And then I'm gonna exploit you. And it's gonna be beautiful for me. Yes, you person, yeah. you are too smart. But no, 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 I'm not too smart. But, but listen, let, let, let's talk about the Twitter fights that I get involved ah. in. Why do I always win against these people? Because they slip. I'm waiting for the mistake and then I exploit it. So never make mistakes. Proofread it. Like, I mean, fucking A, when you're gonna get in a fight, it's just saying with me, don't slip. I will catch you and I will exploit it. Mm -hmm. it and it's gonna be embarrassing. That's all. Yeah. Pico, yes? Yes. Pico? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> because you always slip and you yeah. had your hand amputated. Yeah, no, no, right. now, now I learn. I learn my lesson. Yeah. I listen to yeah. Mo every time. Yeah, just tell the truth. Because yeah, yeah, no. it, 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 even if you fuck up, if you tell the truth, we're, we're going to be all right because mm -hmm. everybody fucks up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but no one's perfect. Just don't lo pretend that you didn't do it. Uh, actually, I you're right. I hate pre pretentious people. I mean, yeah. if you know it, you know it. If you don't, then shut up. Yeah, Quiet. shut the fuck up. Exactly. I My mean, God. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. All right. Um. Hey, you know what? How about this? Mm. I was gonna say I was gonna say this line, but I, my computer went on sleep mode. Hold on, let me. Okay, there we go. Good news to those who like 
me are allergic to long lines, particularly at banks. The BPI Express mobile app becomes even more accessible as BPI launches free access to Globe Telecom's over 38 million prepaid, postpaid, and TM customers. So uh, for more info, you can visit bpiexpressonline.com. Let's take one last call because it's already midnight, I think. Happy in Independence Day! Yeah, it's holiday time, baby. Mm -hmm. So we're almost at midnight, so one last call and we get the hell out of here. Georgia 27 in Bohol, welcome to the show. Line 6. Hi, Mo. Thank you. Hi, Miss Erica. Hello. Hello, girl. Hi. Uh, Mo, first time, long time. Thank you, George. That's so kind of you, man. I really, really appreciate that. I love when you guys say that. Thank you. Oh, and Miss Erica, I'd follow you anywhere. Me too. Wow, thank you. Oh, literally? Absolutely. Okay. That's a bullshit. Maybe on Twitter. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, I, have a, I have a question for the both of you real quick here. I have, uh, let's say you have two sets of friends. I have two sets of friends, a guy and a girl, and they are a couple. And um, I didn't know that they were a couple when we started being friends. But uh, later on, a few months after, uh, they told me that they were together. And suddenly, this girl introduces me to this other guy who she claims is her boyfriend. Okay. Um, so she's got two boyfriends? So she, oh, yeah. Uh, now guy. My, my, my pickle is, uh, I don't know if I should tell the guy because uh, to my guy friend, which is, you know, what, what he says is her girlfriend, because I don't want him to suddenly get mad at me saying, you know, trying to ruin the relationship. And I also don't want to lose the friendship of the girl. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so you're stuck in the middle. By the way, love your use of pickle. You don't hear a lot of people use that. That's nice. Like Thank that. you. Yeah, no, no that's the, I like you immediately already just because of that word. Um, so you're just stuck in between two friends, and one's cheating on the other, and you feel like you need to do something, something about it yeah. because there's a crime, a relationship crime happening. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yes, and the, okay. the worst thing is, you know, uh, you don't want to be that bad friend that – you know, if the guy eventually found out, you'd be the bad friend. Why didn't you tell yeah. me? Mm -mm. Yeah, you, you broke know? the bro code. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, okay, well, Erica, do you want to go first or well, what's the I, deal here? First, I think it would be, be if I were in your shoes, I think um, it would be best to talk to the girl first. Clary, I mean, it would be easier for me to talk to the girl um, by, you know, by just saying, uh, what's up with this? Because I thought you were with this person with... With our friend, with my friend here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I thought you were with him, so I think you can ask her about what the situation is from her end before going actually to the guy first. You know what I'm saying? Um, because at the end of the day, I still feel that it's a responsibility. If you truly are a friend, you have to tell your friend that he's being cheated on, and just for you to uh, be methodical about it. Go to the girl first and clarify certain things. Maybe you can encourage her to break it off with the original boyfriend if she finds herself really in love with this new guy. That's still breaking the bro code, though. Erica, what the fuck? The I'm sorry, friends. I'm not aware of that bro code. Yeah, well, the bro I, code I'm just is... saying, as a girl, you know, if I, if, if I'm yeah, that... yeah, no, no, I, and, and I'm sorry, I, that's my that's that's immature of me to even call it bro code because I hate when these 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 you know pop culture kind yeah. of terminology for the shit. But it, it is okay. If she, if he goes to the girl and says, "I, I encourage you to break up with our friend because you're cheating." No, on I'm her. not encouraging. I'm not encouraging. Uh, I'm sorry. What's your name again? Uh, George. 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 I'm not encouraging George to advise the girl to break up with their with a the boyfriend, who's George's friend. What mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is, George, talk to your girlfriend. Talk to the girl, and ask her what's the deal. What's up with this two timing thing? If you don't want me telling your guy that there's something wrong going on on your end, better do, do, it by, do it yourself. Clarify things yourself. Because as a friend to the guy, I think it's my responsibility to tell him that he's being cheated on. Well, that's just my take on it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see where you're at. And I, I agree with you about... I agree with you almost 100%. It's just, we, we, you know, I, I, we're I, just, I disagree. We're just broken up with that bro code thing. Yeah, no, no, well, yeah, a little bit. Where I, how do I disagree with this? I, I agree with what you're saying, Erica. My thing, though, how I would attack it is who are you closest with first? Like, who means more to you? 
Because yes, we're gonna break bro codes and we're gonna do this. We're gonna. But what's the most important thing in in all of this? Don't fuck with the. Don't fuck over the friend you're closest to. There is a hierarchy here. There's a priority. Which one of the two is the priority in your life, the guy or the girl? Well, at first it was the girl, and then suddenly the guy got closer to me. Okay. So who are you closer with, the guy or the girl? The guy. Right now. Okay. okay. And he is a better friend to you than she is? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then you tell him. You know why? Because he's also the victim of this. So you take the two things into consideration. is A, you're closer to him. He is a better friend to you. And B, he's also the victim of this fucking ordeal. But the thing is that, that alone makes me lean towards my loyalty towards his side, and I will confront him about it. I hear you. I hear you, George, that you're closer to the guy now. But what I'm trying to say is just so – my just, just my take on this. Just so you won't have the responsibility on your shoulders – the reason why I was suggesting that you talk to the girl first is for the girl to do the fixing herself. So at the end but of the day, but doesn't she know already that she's fucking up and she should like fix something? I mean, like, just encourage her just to gonna... really clear things up. Encourage her to clear things and, up. And and do you think? And if... Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa Erica. Okay. Say you are the girl. Ah. Uh. Okay. Say you have a boyfriend and you're also cheating on said boyfriend, mm. and you completely understand what you're in, right? You mm. fucking made the decision. I mean, really, am I, Bilang Mo, gonna go up to you, Erica, and say, Erica, hey, listen, I think you're doing something wrong, and I, I encourage you to, I mean, don't you know this shit already? I mean, you, oh, nga, the, the girl knows Am I so instrumental in your life that you're gonna actually move on something? Because no, I maybe, just, you because obviously, both guys don't know the situation because they think that they're not being too timed. So the thing is, George here will be the instrument to tell her that if you're not going to do anything about this, then I'm going to do something about it. But you don't which go gives right her, Which gives her a chance to fuck you over by running to boyfriend and saying, to your friend, and saying that you're threatening to do this and this and that. My, you know, come on, listen. Well, uh, George, you listen to the show a long time, right? You said it, first time, uh -huh. long time. What's my number one advice when you come up with some when you come up to somebody regarding an issue or a scandal? Do you know? Pico, tell them. Hmm? What's the number one I th I think I tell you do to arm yourself with when you're gonna go up to somebody? Evidence. Yeah, it's evidence. always evidence. Mm -hmm. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Yeah, screenshots. You do not uh -huh. fucking go to him without concrete evidence that supports your claim. That's the number one thing always. So when you get your evidence, you head to him. That's my opinion. Now Erica's gonna give you some. Give well, you another... get your. I agree with that. I agree with the evidence thing. Get your evidence, and go to the girl. Girl, I have this evidence that you're you're two timing these guys, and I cannot allow that you're doing it to my friend. So if you're not gonna do anything about it, I'm holding this evidence, and you're gonna be in big trouble. I see. That's the right thing to do. I'm just saying that. Give the girl the op. Maybe the girl is confused. Maybe she doesn't nah. want to be in that situation too. Whatever. The point <laughs> is, if you can, if you can give the burden to her, just so she won't be embarrassed totally, just so she can pick up herself from the mistake better. Why not? So, can I cut in real quick? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um. So, sorry about that. Uh. The girl. Uh, the thing is, the reason why we haven't told our friend is because we gave this girl a chance to uh. tell him herself. Because honestly, if you're being cheated on, you you kind of want to hear it from the person who's doing the cheating. If not, if not, um, you know, she can make an excuse to get out of it. Just as long as he stops. So you actually did my advice on her friend. <laughs> but the thing is, she has not taken any of the opportunities to do so. Well, that's the thing. I mean, actually, you already did well, what yeah. I what you I did, suggested. You did the shot. Then go ahead, go tell the guy. <laughs> go tell the dude. All right. Tell him as soon as you can. Yeah. To be honest, with go the on. evidence. Yeah, well, of of course, you, you have to have evidence, man, or else this is just you're gonna get into some shit. All right. So get some evidence, or maybe not. I mean, it's always best to go with evidence, but if you certainly don't have any. Then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna s test your luck, but still do it. 
You know, I, I was talking about this on the radio, Erica, the mm-hmm. other day. I don't know if this was the one you were there. No, no, there was one. This was on Monday. About being a sumbongero. Yeah, you know, sumbongero is a really bad label if you're mm-hmm. a sumbong person. So think of yourself as a whistleblower because that's very trendy. You're a whistleblower. Okay, there's a crime going on here. You're yes. state witness, baby. Head over there and you're so pare. Magu whistleblower muna ako sa ah. And then you know, all of a sudden, it's still a little bit more noble. Yeah. Than sumbongero. <laughs> whistleblower. Whistleblower. <laughs> Very political. Very political. Okay. All right, George. All right, George. Tell your guy friend. Good stuff. All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey. Thank you. Tell him now. Uh. Uh, Erica, you're super sharp and you're super right, and you're you're more right about it than I am in this in this little problem. But I'm not taking your advice. I'm still going to my better friend. I respect I'm, that. I'm, I'm I'm too I'm too proud, loyal <laughs> to the better friend. Well, I, because understandable. I'm, because I, I'm one of those guys that if you're a really good friend of mine, I'm not gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna do the thing that's best for you. So, for example, Erica, say you and I, and this has happened with many other of my friends who are celebrities. Mm -hmm. They'll send me a text message or a DM and they're like, Mo, I need your help. Why? I need you to fight this person (laughs) online or on the radio. Like really fucking shit them out. Shit them out. And I'm like, well, that person's never done anything wrong to me. I think about it. I'm like, that person's never done anything wrong to me. And this is wrong to use my medium. But you know what? You're my friend. Fuck yeah, I'll do that. Fuck that, yeah. Fuck yeah, that person's going down. And I'll do it. It's wrong, but my loyalty to my friends are greater than what's wrong and right. So while you're right, he definitely should talk to the girl first. As they have, and they give him the ultimatum. That's all correct. That's all better advice than I am. I'm not doing it, though. I'm going to him. Well, that's your choice, and I respect that. If ever friends, my friends will come to me and ask me the same favor, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, within reason, though. I'm not going to fucking... I, hey, Mo, I need an accomplice to rob this bank. I need you to drive the car. No, asshole. I'm not going to do that. You yeah. know? Or, uh, yeah, we're going to kill this guy. No, I would no, understand no, no, if you're going to do, do it in a way to point out a certain logic, a certain reasoning to defend your friend. Well, to that's defend. Un- yeah, that's yep. understandable. But not to actually fight the person. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm probably- fighting them because the, I'm, it's, it's a revenge. That you're doing so for it's, your it's friend. an offensive. Yeah, it's an offensive in the name of defense. Oh, oh I, I see that. Well, I'm not going to take that approach. The, maybe the extent that I can go is establish that certain logic, that certain reasoning that uh, is flawed in the whoever is fighting with. Right, right. You know, that, that, see that, again, ultimately, that's my point. My point is you're right. It's just there are going to be people who are not going to take the right path. And I'm and happy that you're good. agreeing that I'm right. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, it's good. If it was my sister who was in this thing, I would tell her to do the right thing. Yeah. Because I want them to be okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, dude. You're just speaking for yourself, yeah. There's a code that has to be lived by. You're a military family. You should know this code. That sometimes, and if you ask your dad, maybe he'd be more like me. Sometimes it's not what's right. It's what you're told to do. Yep. It's upholding. Oh my gosh, tell me about it. When we were young, I would always hear that. Follow, for, follow first before you question. Because I'm not yeah, going to feed it to the dogs. Yeah, that's dangerous. That is but dangerous. see, it, it's, it's funny though you say that because that's my analogy. My analogy is you're my friend. I will fight the dogs with you. Mm-hmm. You go down. If you're going down, I'm going down with you. We're fucking blazing. <laughs> I mean, we'll, I'll go to the mud shit of the ends of the earth with you if we're pals. Good thing. Because I expect it from you as well. So I'm very glad that you're my friend. In case yeah, I need yeah, yeah. your help. <laughs> well, we're lukewarm, you and I. We're all right. We're, I mean, all we're right. not. So you know why? Because you're not telling me about the baller you're dating. I'm not dating anybody. Some, 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 see, you've lied to me again. I'm That's not dating fine. anyone. That's fine. I'll take that lie. That's no worries. When Mo, we come back, Mo, we're going to say Mo. our goodbye. All right. To uh, Erica Padilla here. You follow her on Twitter, <laughs> by the way, at Padilla Erica. More importantly, though, in the meantime, get yourself a copy of FHM. It's uh, F-H-M. on the cover. <laughs> On the cover is Erica for the month of June, and she is naked. No, I'm not. Almost. 90%. Stay tuned. We'll return after this commercial break. During and after the pandemic, what happened? 
sa Yolanda, seeing everybody helping out each other, that's what really made sense to me. Since I'm a fashion stylist, I would always want what looks good together and finding the pieces that would look great together. I think for us as Filipinos to get up and mobilize to help other Kababayans in need, that's natural to us. But for us in this case, to never give up and never get tired. Whatever your job is, it doesn't matter. During that time, we just all went there, helped each other, and moved the world. gravity of the devastation, I just, I don't know, there was something inside me that just felt like nothing else in my life mattered. I worked very closely with Gawad Kalinga. I was so happy that Globe chose them too because as an organization, I feel that their love and care for the people and the communities is something that I don't see enough. You know, I just find that that was the most special one for me. It's a good feeling, especially when you know when you're helping some other people, especially when you see them so happy because they're gonna have a new house, new home. It also means that we're showing them that we're involved, that we care, that they're not alone. executives were here today. And on the ambassador side, it's me, Liz, Morris, who's a new ambassador. Well, it's an eye-opening thing. Through activities like this, it just goes to show how much commitment GLOBE has to, to this effort. See it for yourselves and participate, spend a few days here and help build some homes. The Globe's Project Wonderful is all about creating a wonderful world for our consumers, our businesses, as well as the nation. It's the sort of the way the Globe's putting together all of the building blocks we've built over the last four years. Remember, the wonderful world includes the nation. And so we also want to make sure that people who are underprivileged, people who have been devastated by the typhoons, also somehow in their own way, live a wonderful world. I think everybody can help. In our own little ways, we can help just by tweeting, using social media, and using your voice. Walang iwanan in the sense that we're here when we start laying out the bricks, when we start making the bricks, when we filter the sand, when we paint the house. But also, more than that, it's restoring the dignity of the people that have lost so much. This whole experience reminds us that nation building can be as simple and meaningful as lives you're building. And when we do things that exceed what is expected of us, we create wonderful. And yes, that's wonderful. So she hates me. It's Good Times with Mo, the podcast. Call the show tonight and get your love problem answered. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast. And visit www.motwister.com. Listen, Eric, I know I asked you on the radio when you were there last week, but uh, it's more confirmed now than ever the ridiculousness of Manny Pacquiao as uh, head coach of the upcoming Kia team in the mm -hmm. PBA. Now, I know you do the PBA. Um... I don't know if there's a... I think I even said this on the radio. I don't know if there's there a canned answer that the PBA has regarding this because it definitely is making, you know, making the news. Yeah, um, the PBA, I think, supports, uh, supports the head coaching of uh, Manny Pacquiao. That's all I know. That's all I know. Well, there's yeah. no statement yet as to 
whatever. There's no particular release of any... Are you allowed to express your opinion on it, like honestly? Or do you have to be diplomatic? Or I'm sure you have to be diplomatic. That at least may uh, Yes, are be you diplomatic allowed to, about it. Are and you I allowed think... to express your opinion? Like, or are, you, are you supposed to only support it as well since you're part of the organization? You no, know, you, can, you can have your, your take on it. And people have expressed different people from the industry. And even in other industries, subcategories of the sports industry have expressed their opinion about it. And... That's right. You have to be diplomatic about about it. Um, I mean, you do, not me. I think it's fucking a joke. But I mean, you don't have to. You have to be diplomatic. So, what's your diplomatic answer regarding Manny being head coach? Because you're going to interview him one day. You're going to be like, yes. Manny, uh, after the first quarter, Kia is down by uh, 17 points. Uh, all the plays have failed. Uh, what do you think you're going to have to do to get back in here for the second quarter? Maybe make a run. Uh, I just want to thanks God for the for the for the eight points that we scored this quarter, and in his goodwill, we'll see. Sana maka thirty five naman tayo by halftime. Uh, and then Chavit's gonna be there standing next to him the entire time, and Jake Hoson's gonna try to get his face fucking in the background, you know, in some way. I mean, that's what that's what your job's gonna be no, come next season. So, I, I'm seeing- how say you? I'm seeing um, some challenges when when that happens next season. I have much respect for Manny Pacquiao for you know for being an icon, an international icon in sports. I just really feel that with also you know with the respect that I have for basketball, I grew to love the players. I respect them. I yeah. see. I what I'm trying to say is I've seen the process that. They 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 go through every day with the practices, with the games and all. I just feel that it would be best if we, you know, if we stick where we're really good at. <laughs> where well, good. It, you, then then I would. It, it would be, it, you know, a lot of people give that answer. That's that's almost the canned answer mm-hmm. is, hey, why don't you just stick with what you're good at? Mm-hmm. Well, mm, that's wrong. You know why? All, Siguro, be, because, ano na lang, what I'm gonna no, say? No, no, no. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's wrong. Okay, go ahead. Because he's a congressman. Okay. And he's not even good at that either. So, but but the responsibility is so huge. As Th- a that's true. It's siguro, it's siguro so na lang. I'm just, I just have to point out my the reason why I'm why I'm saying that. Let's stick to where we're good at because there are certain things in basketball that are very different to the things he is oriented to, and the overlapping of things might actually put players in danger. That's a possibility, you know, with their training and all. I'm not saying that he's not going to be surrounded by. Surrounded by uh, people that an will, excellent staff, uh, a staff that like will... his brother, his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not. Chavit. I'm not saying that, but the thing is, I think um, more than the head coaching of of Pacquiao, I'm really more concerned about the players and how they can really develop into becoming professionals in their field. I think there are more equipped coaches. I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying they're. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, I, I, that's where your diplomatic is. Your your your, your disclaimers are noted. No mm-hmm. worries, you don't even have to say them anymore. But I get where you're at. Yeah, it's, eh, come on, let's just call it as what it is. It, he has no formal training in in coaching, and not that you have to, because your Derek Fishers and your Steve Kerr's and all of that are head coaches of, um, you know, say NBA mm. franchises. But at least they have experienced the professional league they've experienced being coached and they can take that as their full-time job and then over time to to man their team Mm -mm. i don't know how manny's going to do that it would be nice if he had some sort of press conference and said hi i am the coach of kia here's how much time i'm going to have dedicate to, to to it because, as you know, as a congressman, and twice a year, I'm going to be gone for three months so I could train for my own personal professional career. Like, how do you all I, – I need to know how you're going to take us seriously as a team. I need to know what framework, what kind of coach are you, defensive-minded, offensive-minded, what kind, of, what, kind of, what kind of system are you going to run? Well, I'm pretty I need sh- you to tell everybody that so we won't stop – so we can stop making fun of you. Well, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. I, I, well, I, well, I'm not actually sure. What I think is I'm sure Kia have foreseen um, the criticisms and all these whatever reactions, negative reactions from people. So 
And I think they're ready for that. I think they will not come out there this coming next season not prepared for the questions and, uh, you know, for the questions and those negative remarks by other people. So let's just have, we'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait. Yeah, we, you're right. We have to wait. But it's just, it's pitiful. It really is. It's not bad. It's fucking embarrassing because you have, and I've said this on the show, you have now taken away the opportunity of more qualified people to be what they should be. Like, there are people out there that are better than you, Mr. Pacquiao, at this. And they've worked harder for it than you have. And they will not, there's one less opportunity for a fellow countryman that you represent to do what they've dreamed and worked hard to do because you have decided and your ego to do this. Mm -hmm. You've taken the ability of a person who's worked harder than you and who you represent so you can have fun and check off some shit off your bucket list. Shame on you. Now, when you start drafting your fucking stupid brother as well and your cousin, then you're even just adding to the ridiculousness of your existence in the sport. Well, again, you can I love basketball in the capacity where you don't take jobs away from the people you represent. I hear you, you can love basketball still. You can watch it. You can play it. You can buy it your own fucking team. You can buy a fucking gym and play till your fucking dick falls off. Manny, don't take away jobs from kids who've worked their ass to get there because of you and your fucking family. You know what? I hear you there. And I, I'm sure that when the season opens, uh, next, when the season opens, we will have the opportunity to clarify things and maybe, you know. Clarify taking a job away. I know I hear you. That's why I will do my job and I will interview him. Okay? I'm not yelling I at you, Erica. you. I'm not yelling at you. I'm talking to Manny here. Come on, Manny. You are an incredible athlete. Incredible. You're you're I'll even say you're an all right congressman, maybe. I don't know shit. I don't know your shit too much. But I mean, come on, bud. The congressman thing we were already laughing. But it's okay. You're entitled because it's a democracy and you're not taking away a job when you're running for Congress. You were elected by the people in a democracy, so I am not going to question that. Are you a good congressman? That's, of course, debatable. But are you qualified to be a congressman? Also debatable. But who's, who are going to tell you, who's going to tell you you're not? Our system allows you for it, as it allows any other guy, as it allows Pico to be a congressman as well. So no worries. But the job, to take away the job to, 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 for, for I mean, coming for basketball, that's fucking crazy talk. Now, now, we're, now this is crazy talk. No, it's less damaging than congressman mm. because if you fuck up Kia, I don't give a shit. I don't fucking give a. I don't fucking care about no goddamn Kia basketball team. Who cares? You know, it, I, you, you, you know, you get what I mean. Like Congress is more important, but whatever. If you want to do this for whatever sake, shame on you, Kia, for allowing it. But I'm confident, you know, that there will be proponents in the sports industry that will step up if protection needs to be put up, so we can, you know, uh, we can. Uh, better hone the skills of these professional athletes so we can also protect them from whatever injustice, if ever there will be any. You know what I'm saying? The guy's not going to be around a lot of the time, though. He, how is he going to conduct practices? How is he going to study film and all of that stuff when he has to be oh, a congressman? And that's why... And he has to be that's a why, goddamn boxer. That's why we would have to wait and see. Because right, if, it, if it will, if right, it will be right, injustice... If, if it will be injustice for the players of Kia, then again, I say there will be people, I'm sure, who will stand up for these athletes to protect them from the injustice. I, I, I don't think that there, there's going to be – I don't think it's going to be an injustice because in the end, they're paid to do their job. The athletes, okay, here's your contract. Play the game regardless of what we – it, because you can't say, oh, well, I've, I just signed to play two years for Kia, but – you have gave me the shittiest players in the league around me. Well, that's not your problem. That's a front office position, and that's our issue. It, it, you, I mean, you're, there's no need to protect them because they're paid to perform yeah. regardless of the, co the, the personnel that is surrounding them. It's just come on is what I'm saying. Let's, I, I mean, let's not make a joke. Well, I league. hear you. I hear you, but I'm still hopeful. It's a national I, sport. I, I, I hear you, but again, I'm hopeful because a lot of things have, again, I told you, have evolved. A lot of things have sure. evolved in our industry and you might not know evolution will happen by the next season 
More yeah, things. He becomes open. the next Popovich. Oh, you know that. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got you, Erica. We gotta get here. I'm sorry. Keep no, no good. problem. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, aside from the FHM thing that we were bringing up a little while ago, she does the PBA, as you have mentioned, mm-hmm. and as we are talking about it now. But don't you know she's also on GMA? She's an uh, actress too. That's right. Um, Kambal Serena. Kambal Serena. Serena. Yeah. Uh, twin. Mermaids. Twin Mermaids. Uh, is on GMA, GMA after... 24 horas. Beautiful. And that's what? Daily, yeah? That's daily. That's daily. Yeah, and PPA more. is uh, every Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, every day except Thursday. <laughs> every day except Thursday. Um, and also, I'm with FHM.com.ph. I used to write for FHM, Dugout Diaries, but now it's going to be turned into a video blog about sports. So watch out for that. Ah, okay. So, Fantastic. All right. Pico, we won't see you tomorrow and the staff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We won't? Mm-hmm. Nope. It's our day off. Aw. Uh, really? But yeah. they're actually partying downstairs. Oh, no, so we'll, I'm not going to... We'll just sleep. Oh. You guys sound sarcastic back there, and I don't take... That's GM, light. by the way. That's GM. That's all GM. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Who's our winner? By the way, did you, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, color of the night. I, I, let's go with the guy with the hiv in Australia. Yes. Are you Adrian. good with that, Erica? Adrian, thirty-two year old from Sydney, Australia. Yeah, you're the you're the one, Adrian. Congratulations. I mean, not on your HIV, on being color of the night. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. All See right, you guys. Thank good night. you, Mo. Bye. Good night. All right, have a good one. Bye, everybody. Good Times with Mo, the podcast season three, was brought to you by Globe. We'd like to thank you for your calls and invite you to check out our other podcast on the new media factory by logging on to nmftv.com. Follow Good Times with Mo on Twitter at GTWM Podcast. Follow Mo at DJ Mo Twister. And don't forget to check out www.motwister.ph. See you next time. The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised.